Welcome to another episode of Today in Radio History. Today we spotlight an episode from Abbott and Costello, which was originally broadcast today, June 18th, 1947. Like and subscribe to us below and click that bell to receive notifications on all of our new videos on YouTube. The Abbott and Costello Show was a 30-minute comedy broadcast first on NBC and later on ABC, beginning July 3rd, 1940, and ending June 9th, 1949. Abbott and Costello debuted on radio on Kate Smith's program in 1938. They continued performing on it until the summer of 1940, and their first program of their own was a summer replacement for The Fred Allen Show in 1940. After a hiatus of two years, the show returned as a regular network program in the fall of 1942 and ran through the spring of 1949. Many of the skits revolved around Bud and Lou's efforts to succeed in some sort of business venture. The skits were often ones that they had used in their own vaudeville act. Get a preloaded mp3 player with Abbott and Costello episodes by clicking on the links below in the description or visit us online at radiolongago.com. Today's famous Who's On First episode titled Baseball originally aired on this date, June 18th, 1947. Today in Radio History presents Abbott and Costello. Ah! That's right, folks. C for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, E for Ennis, L for Lou Costello. Put them all together and they spell camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's camel show starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. <laughs> Costello, come here. Costello, will you come over here, please? Will you listen to me? What are you writing on that pad? Hey, Abbott. What are you writing on that pad? I'm just making out a list of girls I'm going to kiss next week. Here's who I got picked out. Lizzie Schwartz, Maggie Mugglemeyer, Tessie Tinfoil, Lana Turner. Now, wait a minute. Lana Turner wouldn't kiss you. Oh, no? Oh, no. Then I'll scratch her off my list. I love you. (laughs) You dummy, always thinking of girls. Girls, girls, girls. A great men don't waste their time on girls. Where do you suppose Benjamin Franklin would have been if he'd have thought of girls all of the time? In the front row at Earl Carroll's? No, no, no. <laughs> Costello, I've been telling you for the past three weeks. You've got to quit chasing girls and get yourself a job. Look at Look how sloppy you are. Look at your socks. I can't help my socks, Abbott. It's those new Hickok plastic garters. What's the matter with them? Your stock socks stay up, but your legs fall down. Yeah. <laughs> Luke Costello. Here, boy. Out of the way, fatso. I'm looking for Luke Costello. Boy, he is Luke Costello. The famous Luke Costello. The one and only Luke Costello. That's me. Gee, I listen to you on the radio every Thursday night. You break me up when you say, how do you do? Wait a minute. (laughs) Wait a minute. That ain't me. That's the mad Russian. You're saying? (laughs) Who's going to take your telegram? I'll take it. it. It's collect. Fourteen dollars. He'll He'll take take it. it. (laughs) <laughs> oh, give it to me. Here, boy. Hey, Costello, this telegram is from Joe DiMaggio. Listen to this. Dear Lou, as you know, I am recovering from a foot operation. I would appreci- appreciate you taking my place... <laughs> appreciate you taking my place on the New York Yankees until I recover. Please report to the Yankee Stadium immediately. Sign, Joe DiMaggio. Have it. Hey, that's, that's the news. That's the news I've been waiting for. I'm going to be a big league ball player. Yes. DiMaggio probably heard about my playing with the Cucamonga Wildcats last year. <laughs> You are ball play? I don't believe it, Costello. You know nothing about ball. Oh, no, I eat baseball. I live baseball. All night when I'm asleep, I dream about baseball. Don't you ever dream about girls? What, and miss my turn up at bat? Oh! <laughs> What's the matter with you? Yes. And another thing, Abbott. What page are you on? Never mind what page you're on. <laughs> another thing, Abbott. 
Not only that, in Patterson, New Jersey, I worked out with a baseball team. I used to stay out till 4 o'clock in the morning. Why did you stay out till 4 o'clock in the morning? This was a girls' baseball team. <laughs> Costello, if you're going to play with the New York Yankees, yeah, you really have to know something about big league baseball, Lou. I know all about baseball. All right, suppose there's a left-handed pitcher pitching. What do you do? I put in a right-handed batter. Now, suppose there's a right-handed pitcher pitching. I put in a left-handed batter. But now I trick you. I take out the right-handed pitcher and put in a left-handed pitcher. Then I double-cross you. I take out my left-handed batter and put in a right-handed batter. Now, wait a minute. Where are you getting all those right-handed batters? The same place where you're getting all those left-handed pitchers. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Bud. Hello, Lewis, honey. It's, uh, it's Marilyn Maxwell. Hello, Marilyn. I've got great news. I'm going to play ball with the New York Yankees. I'm taking you along as a pitcher. Oh, now, Costello, Marilyn Maxwell can't pitch. Oh, no? You should see all the guys she struck out that were trying to get the first base. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> this kid has got some nice curves. Oh, I know. oh, Lewis, you're so sweet. But I do hope you be careful. You know, big league baseball is a very dangerous game. Oh, what's dangerous about baseball, Marilyn? Well, I read in the paper this morning that in the opening game in Boston... Five players died on base. <laughs> Marilyn, you don't seem to know much about baseball. Let me show you how to play indoor baseball. First, I put my left arm around your waist. Then I snuggle my head on your shoulder like this. Then I press my cheek against your cheek. Oh, wait a minute, Costello. That's not the way to play indoor baseball. How do you like that? Every season, new rules. <laughs> well, uh, goodbye and good luck, Lewis. I just know you'll become famous for those New York Yankees. Marilyn's right, Thank Costello. You, yes. This is Thank your you. chance to become famous. Now, you've got a good job as a baseball player. Then you might find your proper niche in life. Yes, I might. I mean, after all, if I find my... What will I find? A niche, a niche. You'll find your niche. Yeah, but when I find an itch, I scratch it. No. <laughs> what in the world are you talking about? An itch. I once had the seven-year itch. What happened? I scratched real fast and got rid of it in three and a half years. <laughs> but I'm not talking about that kind of an itch. I mean, a niche in life. A niche in life is what everyone is looking for. Anyone who is successful has found a niche. Well, if that's the case, I know an Airedale that is doing very well. Uh, well listen, <laughs> listen to me, Costello. When I say a niche, I don't mean a niche like you have when you have an itch. I mean a niche like you have when you have a notch. Oh, you don't mean an itch like a niche when you have a niche. You mean a niche like you have when you have a notch. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Costello, why do you mash everything up like that? You're the most mixed-up man I ever saw. Well, maybe it's because I fell on my mother's mix master this morning. She had it set for mashed potatoes. Oh, I know. I'm all muddy. I know that. You're an idiot. All I'm trying to tell you is that a niche is a notch. Catch? Notch. Notch. All right. Now you know that a niche is a notch. Uh, you know that both of them are the same. Yes. Now, I could have a notch and you could have a niche. Yes. Niche to me and notch to you. Yes. <laughs> I'm only trying to impress you the importance of being a big, big league ball player and having a good income. Did you ever draw a nice big fat salary? No, I never drew a fat salary, but I once sketched a skinny tomato. No, no, no. No, no when I say draw, I don't mean draw like you draw when you draw. I mean draw like you draw when you draw a salary. Have it. Let me smell your breath. Mm-hmm. Just as I thought. You've drawn one too many already. Now, 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 you listen to me, please. When I say you draw a salary, I mean you draw money. Now he's got me drawing money. Wait till the FBI finds out about this. I'll probably draw 20 years in a clink. And they don't feed you any salary in there, either. Costello, when I say you draw money, I mean you draw like you draw money to spend it. Not, not like when you draw on an easel. That's what I always say. With money, it's easel come, easel go. No, no, no. Everybody draws money. I draw money. I've been drawing money for years. My brother draws money. He's been drawing money for years. You draw, and your brother draws? Certainly. Just as I thought. You and your brother are an old pair of drawers. <laughs> Experience is the best teacher. It happened shortly after the end of the war. Two cigarettes glow in the dusk on the veranda of a country house as a man and woman are chatting. The woman remarks... Robert, you've changed your cigarette brand. This is a camel. I can tell without even looking. Yes, I have changed my brand. You know how we smoked whatever cigarettes we could get during the war? Don't I? Yes, I must have tried all the brands during that shortage. And that's when I found I liked camels best. And weren't you right? Yes, experience is the best teacher. During the wartime shortage, 
People smoked whatever cigarettes they could get. It was this experience that taught millions the differences in cigarette quality. As smokers tried cigarette after cigarette on their T-zones, that's tea for taste and tea for throat, it was Camel's rich, full flavor and cool mildness that stood out from all the others. The result? Today, more people smoke Camel's than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Try a Camel. And while you light up a Camel, here's Skinny Ennis with... In the... When I go to sleep, I never can sheep. I tell all the charms about Linda. Lately it seems, in all of my dreams, I walk with my arms about Linda. But what good does it do me? For Linda doesn't know I exist. Can't help feeling gloomy. Think of all the loving I've missed. We pass on the street. My heart skips a beat. I say to myself, hello, Linda. If only she'd smile, I'd stop her a while. And then I would get to know Linda. But miracles still happen. And when my lucky star begins to shine. With one lucky break, I'll make Linda My heart skips the beat I say to myself, hello, Linda If only she'd smile I'd stop her a while And then I would get to know Linda But miracles still happen And when my lucky star begins to shine With one lucky break I'll make Linda mine big uh, league ball player, you've got to get yourself in shape. Now, from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., you lift weights. From 9 to 10, deep knee bends. 10 to 11, skip rope. 11 to 12, run five miles. 12 to 1, I'll never make it. I love <laughs> You idiot, you'll never be a ball player. Staying up late and going to nightclubs, eating rich food, running around with beautiful girls. Do you know what can happen to you? Yes, I can become manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers. I... <laughs> Hello. I don't even know why DiMaggio picked you. You don't even know how to swing a bat. I know all about swinging bats. When I was a kid, my father used to hit me with a baseball bat. My brother used to hit me with a baseball bat. My Uncle Artie Stebbins used to hit me with a baseball bat. And my mother used to hit me with a tennis racket. With a tennis racket? Yes, she didn't like baseball. <laughs> Hi, fellas. Well, it's Skinny Ennis. Hey, Costello. I heard about you taking uh, Joe DiMaggio's place for the New York Yankees. That's right. You know, I used to pitch for the Hollywood Stars. And boy, I'll never forget my last game. There were five men on base. No, oh, no, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Five men on base. Now, that's impossible. Did you ever see the Hollywood stars play? I... <laughs> Ennis, I've seen the Hollywood stars, and I don't remember you. Oh, I've changed a lot since then. I had the biggest buck teeth you ever saw. I was the only man on the team that could slide into second base and spike you from either end. <laughs> well, so long, fat though. So long, skinny. So long. Hey, you know that skinny would make an ugly skeleton? All right. <laughs> now, Stella, don't waste time with him. Now, you've got to get ready for the opening game. Yes, I think we're going to play the Cleveland Indians. Cleveland Indians, eh? Uh-huh. Feller pitching? Certainly there's a feller pitching. <laughs> Who do you think they'd use a girl? Oh, I, I know they don't use a girl. I said feller pitching. What feller? Feller with the Cleveland Indians. Look, Abbott, there's nine guys on the Cleveland team. Now, which feller are you talking about? <laughs> feller that pitches. There is only one feller with Cleveland. You mean nine Yankees are going to play against one feller? That's right. 
Cleveland. You mean there's no fellas in the outfield? No. And there's no fellas in the infield? No. Cleveland only has one fella. Well, this fella must be pretty good if, if they don't need, he don't need any other players but himself. Look, all the players will be out there helping him. You just said there was only one fella on the team. That's right. Then where did all them other fellas come from? Oh, you idiot. When I say there's only one fella on the team, I mean there is only one fella that pitches. Well, Abbott, when the manager of the team wants this pitcher, what does he call him? Feller. You mean he just hollers, hey, feller! And this guy knows that they mean him? That's right. <laughs> His name is Feller, Feller, Bob Feller. And when I say there is only one feller on the team that pitches, that's it. And the feller that pitches is Feller. There's only the other fellers on the team, uh, but there's uh, only one feller. Boy, are you mixed up. <laughs> Oh, you mean the fella that pitches is fella. And there's other fellas on the team, but they're not fellas? Now you grasp it. Yes, I grasp it, but it keeps slipping out of my hand. <laughs> Let's go into this sporting goods store and get your baseball equipment. I want you to look right for the opening game. Now, go ahead and ask that lady there where they keep the baseball uniforms. Uh, pardon me, miss. Well, if it isn't Mr. Albert. Hello. And Mr. Costello. Hello. You fought a little mon, you. <laughs> what are you doing in the sporting goods store, miss? Oh, I just soaked in to get a gift for my nephew. I'm buying him a boss ball. Ball. Boss ball? ball? <laughs> Abbott, you know what a boss ball is? That's what the poocher throws to the coocher. <laughs> and the booter tries to boot a home room. <laughs> my, uh, my nephew is just a lotto chope, but his ambition is to be a Brooklyn doger cotcher. Well, if he's only a little guy, why don't he join the deep troot tookers and be a short stoop? <laughs> be going. As we say in Chinese, get your gooey hot suey on to you. to you. And a dish of gooey chop suey and a push to you, too. Hey, look, that's a list. It comes to the salesman now. Oh, good morning, boys. As Johnny Weissmeller said to bust a crab, what dive did you come out of? <laughs> well, my friend and I are here to get some baseball equipment. Uh, I'd like to see a baseball uniform that would fit Costello. So would I. <laughs> Look, as Adam said to Eve, quit ribbing me. <laughs> However, I'll do the best I can. We'll start with the spiked shoes. What size do you wear? Eight. Oh, let me see. I've only got one pair left, and they're size five. Maybe you can squeeze into them, Costello. Go ahead and try. Okay. <laughs> what do you know? Open-toed baseball shoes. <laughs> Now for the uniform. My, you're certainly a pudgy little rascal, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Aren't you overweight? I'm about 120 pounds overweight, but I'm going back to my normal weight. Yes, that's normal. 60 pounds overweight. <laughs> Gosh, Sally, you, you should really go on a diet. Yeah, of course you know what a diet is, don't you? Oh, sure. That's where you can eat all you want of everything you don't like. <laughs> Young man, if you really want to reduce, why don't you exercise with a couple of dumbbells? Okay, I'm ready whenever you and Abbott are. All right, <laughs> your baseball equipment. Mister, do you have any bats? Oh, certainly. Here's a fine bat. Autographed by Slaughter of the Cardinals. This bat was made for Slaughter. Ain't you got one that was made for baseball? <laughs> when he says Slaughter, he means Slaughter the baseball player. Slaughter the baseball player? With that bat, you could slaughter anybody. <laughs> no, no, Costello. I'm talking about Slaughter. Everybody knows Slaughter. He knows Slaughter. Well, maybe he knows Slaughter, but I don't know him. Uh, you idiot. Everybody knows Slaughter, the baseball player. Slaughter is the man's last name. What's his first name? He knows. Now, there's a clever guy. He knows his first name. Oh, look. Forget about the bat. Look, listen. Do you have a baseball cap that will fit Costello's head? What size pencil sharpener does he wear? Yeah. Oh, oh, a baseball cap. Oh, yes. Here's a dandy. This is the kind fella wears. What fella? The fella with the Cleveland Indians. There's nine players with the Cleveland Indians. Which fella are you talking about? Oh, young man, when I say fella with the Cleveland Indians, I am only referring to one fella. The fella that pitches with the Cleveland Indians. When you say the fella with the Cleveland Indians, you're only referring to one fella. The fella that pitches for the Cleveland Indians. Yes. Yeah. As Orville said to Wilbur, you're right. <laughs> Routines sporting good stories. Oh, forget about him, Custer. Hey, wait a minute. I've got an idea. Mrs. Wetwash's late husband used to be a big league ba- ball player. 
Now, he was a home run king in other ways. Now, maybe she'll give you one of his bats for good luck. Let's go over to her house and ask her. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll go right over now, huh? You're right, Abbott. As John Adams said to Henry Wadsworth Longfellow... How do you like that? I forgot what John Adams said to Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. <laughs> Well, good morning, Mrs. Wetwash. Oh, hello, Mr. Abbott. Oh, my, you know you ought to muzzle that St. Bernard dog. <laughs> oh, pardon me, it's Costello. <laughs> uh, tell me, Costello, how are things in Gawker, moron? <laughs> Mrs. Wetwash, I wish you hadn't said that. I was just telling Abbott, your face reminds me of a rose. Oh, really? An American beauty rose? No, a rhinoceros. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Wetwash, Costello's leaving for New York to join uh, Joe DiMaggio's play. Take Joe's place. Isn't that wonderful? He's going to play with the Yanks. Oh, I can't believe it. Yes? What do those big Yanks bomb with a little jerk like him? <laughs> Mrs. Wetwash, that was an insult. I'll have you know that beautiful women find me irresistible. <laughs> I don't find you irresistible. And I don't find you beautiful. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Ask her for those baseball bats her husband left her. Okay. Mrs. Whitwash, I understand when your husband was alive, he had a lot of old bats. That's a lie. He never went out with anybody but me. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 Mrs. Whitwash. Costello means your husband's uh, baseball bats. You yes. see, he thought you might give him one of them. Yes. That's right, Mrs. Whitwash. You see, I need a good bat. Oh, you need a good bat. I'll be glad to help you out. Can I have the bat right now? Right now. Oh, <laughs> 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 Presents lovely Marilyn Maxwell for Metro Golden Mayor, producers of The Sea of Grass. For Camel fans everywhere, in honor of New Orleans Jazz Week, Marilyn sings for the first time on the air the title song of the picture, New Orleans. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans and miss it each night and day? I know I'm not wrong. The feeling's getting stronger the longer I stay away. It's the moss covered vines, the tall sugar pines, where mockingbirds used to sing. And I'd like to see. A hurrying in to spring The moonlight on the bayou A creole tune that fills the air I dream about magnolias in June And soon I'm wishing that I Nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Three leading independent research organizations asked this question of 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand name most was Camel. Now, you probably enjoy rich, full flavor and cool mildness in a cigarette just as much as doctors do. And that's why, if you're not a Camel smoker now... Try a camel on your T-zone. That's T for taste and T for throat. Your true proving ground for any cigarette. See if camel's rich flavor of superbly blended choice tobaccos isn't extra delightful to your taste. See if camel's cool mildness isn't in harmony with your throat. See if you too don't say camels suit my T-zone to a T. 
Well, Costello, I'm going to New York with you. You know, Bucky Harris, the Yanks manager, gave me a job as coach for as long as you're on the team. Look, Abbott, if you're a coach, you must know all the players. I certainly do. Well, you know, I, mean, I never met the guys, so you'll have to tell me their names, and then I'll know who's playing on the team. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you their names, but you know, strange it may seem, they give these ball players nowadays very peculiar names. You mean funny names? Strange names, pet names, like Dizzy Dean and... His brother Daffy. Daffy Dean. And their French cousin. French. Gouffet. Gouffet Dean. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, let's see, we have on the bags, we have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find I out. I say, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Are you the manager? Yes. You're going to be the coach, too? Yes. And you know the fellow's name? Oh, I should. Well, then who's on first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first baseman. Who? The guy playing first. Who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's it. That's who? Yes. (laughs) You got a first baseman? Certainly. Who's playing first? That's right. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. (laughs) All I'm trying to find out is the fellow's name on first base. Who? The guy that gets the money. That's it. Who gets the money on first base? He does. Every dollar. Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Whose wife? Yes. Look, all I want to know is when you sign up the first baseman, how does he sign his name to the Who? contract? The guy. Who? How does he sign his That's name? That's how he signs it. Who? Yes. <laughs> oh, to find out what's the guy's name on first base? No, what is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? One base at a time. Well, don't change the play I'm not changing nobody. Take it easy, buddy. I'm only asking you who's the guy on first base. That's right. Okay. All right. <laughs> No, so what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on who's second. Who's on first? I don't know. Oh, he's on third. We're not talking about him. Now, <laughs> now, how did I get on third base? Why, you mentioned his name. If I mention a third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, who's playing first? What's on first? What's on second? I don't know. He's on third. There I go, back on third again. Will you stay on third base and don't go off it? All right, what do you want to know? Now, who's playing third base? Why do you insist on putting who on third base? What am I putting on third? Oh, what is on second? You don't want who on second? Who is on first? I don't know. Third base! <laughs> Sure. The left fielder's name. Why? I just thought I'd ask. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Now tell me who's playing left field. Who is playing first? I'm not saying on any infield. <laughs> I want to know what's the guy's name in left field. No, what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on who's second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third base. Okay. <laughs> and the left fielder's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. <laughs> look, look, look. You got a picture on a team? Sure. The pitcher's name? Tamara. You don't want to tell me the day? I'm telling you, then man. Go ahead. Tamara. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me who's pitching? Now, listen. Who is not pitching? I'll who break is... your arm, you say. Who's on first? <laughs> I want to know what's the pitcher's name. What's on second? I don't know. Third base. base. <laughs> now, the catcher? Certainly. The catcher's name? Today. Today. And tomorrow's pitcher. Now you've got it. All we got is a couple of days on the <laughs> Catcher too. No, they don't. I get behind the plate, do some fancy catching. Tomorrow's pitching on my team, and a heavy hitter gets up. Yes. Now the heavy hitter busts the ball. When he busts the ball, me being a good catcher, I want to throw the guy out of first base, so I pick up the ball and throw it to who? Now that's the first thing you've said right. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's all you have to do. Just to throw the ball at first base. Yes. Now who's got it? Naturally. <laughs> oh, if I throw the ball at first base, somebody's got to get it. Now who has? It? Naturally. Who? Naturally. Naturally? Naturally. So I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. No, you don't. You throw the ball in a hole. Naturally. That's the... That's what I said. You're not saying that. I throw the ball in naturally. You throw it to who? Naturally. That's it. That's what I said. That's it. You ask me. I throw the ball to who? Naturally. Now you ask me. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. That's it. Same as you. Same as you. I throw the ball to who? Whoever it is drops the ball and the guy runs a second. Yes. Who picks up the ball and throws it to what? What throws it to I don't know? I don't know. Throws it back to tomorrow? Triple play. Yes. Another guy gets up and it's a long fly ball to be caused. Why? I don't know. He's on third and I don't give a darn. Well, what? I said I don't give a darn. Oh, that's our shortstop. I'm in <laughs> For Camel cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Fort Lyon, Colorado, USAF Station Hospital, Davis Mountain Field, Tucson, Arizona, U.S. Naval Hospital, Quantico, Virginia, U.S. Marine Hospital, Baltimore, Maryland, and Veterans Hospital, Palo Alto, California. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week. 
are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where men are still stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now back to Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Uh, what is that, Lou? You've got your hand there. Another telegram? Hey, Abbott, look. I just got a telegram from Joe DiMaggio. Well, go ahead and read it. Okay. Dear Lou, just heard your show. I think you have the makings of the world's greatest natural ball player. You have spiked teeth, a club head, and you've been off your base for years. Good <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. And a special good night to Joe DiMaggio. Get well quick, Joe. <laughs> Listen to Abbott and Costello again next Thursday night when Costello is going to build himself a new prefabricated house. You can imagine the trouble he'll get into. I don't know whether it'll be a one story house or a two story house, but anyway, that's another story. Prince Albert Pipe Appeal. They're one and the same thing. Any tobacco burns, makes smoke, but where else can you find the tobacco that has the pipe appeal of Prince Albert? The coolness, mildness, the rich, full flavor. Prince Albert is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. Crim cut to smoke slow and cool. So pack your pipe with mellow, rich PA. Enjoy Pipe Appeal with Prince Albert. And while we're speaking of enjoying yourself, be sure to tune in on Grand Ole Opry on NBC Saturday night. You all know and love the songs of America, but this week you have something extra special in store for you. Red Foley and his gusts, Ernest Tubb and Roy Acuff. Grand Ole Opry, Saturday night on NBC. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a Camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking Camels than ever before. C-A-M-P-L-S Abbott and Costello's famous baseball routine, Who's On First, is now available at Phonograph Records. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. Camel.